Well, we're joined now by the political analyst, Professor Lasiba Terpel, and Professor at the School of Governance at the University of Stellenbosch, Professor Mark Swilling. A gentleman, a professor, both. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I do appreciate it. Professor Terpel, if I may just start with you. Insofar as I know, this is the first time a sitting president has been called to account by Parliament's Standing Committee on Public Accounts. How, how significant is this? Um, well, it is not necessarily extraordinary because it is provided for that if and when anybody, including citizen number one, can be called account to account wherever need, whenever need arises, especially in a matter of this nature where there are allegations of the use of improper use of state resources, use of public money for a, a private organization whatever the name the, the, that of, um, thereof. But at the, bo at the bottom line is, for me, unprecedented, but appropriate and provided for at law. Professor Swilling, I would imagine the president has no other option. He has to comply with the law. He has to write a full and proper account. I imagine this would be a letter that would have some legal standing as well. He has to explain his comments. Yeah, and I'm sure he will. Uh, I mean, the initial response was to question, you know, how is this released? But now it's going to get closer to the core, which is where he has to essentially admit whether he said that or not. Uh, there's, no, there's no escaping that. But I think we need to see this in a wider context, which is where the president made a decision to go public with the Zondo report, to go public with the SIU report. In other words, he's saying, listen, I've got nothing to hide. Uh, let's be transparent. And uh, there's another faction that's saying, well, okay, we're going we're gonna to call you uh, to your word. Uh, Professor Tepo, I mean, Professor Swilling remarks about the other faction. I think it's important to note this here. It may or may not be relevant, but it's, a, it's an important fact that Mervyn Dirks, the ANC MP, is suspended for doing this, by the way. We know, and I think he's publicly said he supports the RET faction of the ANC. Does that matter? Should we ignore that in all of this? The recording is the recording. It doesn't matter how we get it. What, what is unique about this recording? Because it is consistent with the practice in the ANC. It says that maybe today it comes from a faction or an individual um, who is not in a dominant faction of the day. But over the years, they themselves have been leaking this, this right, in order to fight their factional battles. And I'm, I'm wary to be drawn into ANC narratives that speak to either this or that faction, because then you lose the plot. You end up not discussing what matters most, and you are now being dictated to as to how your logic should operate when you discuss matters of this nature. At the heart of it, what was said by Mr. Dex, is, was it correct or not? How that was, was uh, retrieved, we can leave that to, to, to the law, but it is not inconsistent with the practices in the ANC. And I want to bracket that and say, let's zero in there and let the truth be told. And citizen number one must be account, at least account to us in the name of transparency, which he promised to uphold. We really would want to hear him pronounce himself on this one. And let's take the factions out. They are going to derail our state. Professor Swilling, in the audio clip, President Ramaphosa says he would never reveal how state money was used for ANC leadership battles because for him the most important thing was the image of the ANC. Now, I think the way most people are going to see that, I mean, certainly the way that I see that, is that it's the sitting president saying the image of his political party is more important than the state, than South Africans. Now, he's been asked about this straight out, I think at least twice, and I think once in Parliament, what's more important, the party or the country? Both times he said the country, in this audio clip, he seems to say something else. Yeah, uh, he, he does. But, uh, yeah, you know, if, if, it, if he actually, if it, it turns out that he actually <coughs> did say that, uh, and it is genuinely him that is talking on this audio clip, then what we are probably going to be told is that he was, simply admitting what a whole bunch of people know within the ANC, which is that public resources are used in various ways uh, to support party activities. 
and it's basically, you know, the, the spin will probably be, let's be honest about this. Um, and yeah, uh, the one of the consequences is going to be holding him to account for the statement that the ANC is more important uh, than anything else. And obviously, as a sitting president, that is that is that is going. He's going. He's going to. He's going to be damaged a bit by that. Professor Tef, already the image of the ANC has taken a hammering over the last few years. We saw the consequences in the local elections. I mean, can the ANC take any more damage considering how close things could be in 2024? I mean, if this were all now to be publicly admitted, the president admits it in whatever way, if that is what happens, I mean, can the ANC take any more electoral damage? Yes, Steve. I'm um, uh, more interested in the previous question. Um, I'm not avoiding this. I'll get back to it. Mm -hmm. But you see, I also have, must give it to the president. He's a fairly sophisticated guy, comparatively speaking, but he's saying exactly what Jacob Zuma said, yes, yes, that the ANC comes first. And Ramaphosa said to us, it will, the ANC will not collapse on my watch. What does that say? Simple interpretation, not sophisticated, is that the ANC, as far as I'm concerned, as President Ramaphosa, I will always enjoy utmost protection and preservation, even if as at the expense of the state. And on that basis, I think, uh, yes, um, a lot of harm is done and will continue to be done to his, to his name, to his reputation, and indeed, even to the organization. Look, whatever we want to say about the ANC, in the past five years or so, it has been going on a downward spiral. And literally every day they are committing harakiri, right? They are really pressing. Maybe it's about time that the people of South Africa also stand up to help them, to help themselves by getting them out of government and putting new, new players into the space, even if they were to come back or remain in the space, but in a transformed form. But I hear many people from the ANC who are saying, maybe the time is nigh that we get out new players come in, not for the sake of the organization, but for the sake of the country. Here is a patriot in the name of Dex, but he's been vilified, renounced and denounced, crucified for being a whistleblower, which the citizen number one said, I shall ensure that you all get protected. And I, I grant it to the president, by the way, since he came into office, people are more willing, ready to speak out because he does provide political support. You can count on him to a certain extent. Unfortunately, he works within the so-called tripartite alliance that constrains his ability to govern better and better he could. Professor Lesiba Tefel, Professor Mark Swilling, gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your time on The Pulse. I do appreciate it.